My name is Colette, and I know I might look like just another typical selfish white woman. Many probably assume by looking at me that I'm one of the lost sheep 35% of the white American women that voted out of hate, out of fear of their husbands, of their fathers, church, and or media for the present preposterous administration. But unlike my many translucent sisters, many hard lessons and beatdowns have led me to compassion and made sure I was not like them. You see, my mother is black. Now maybe not my earthly birth mother, although she's as fierce as they come, having raised four strong daughters almost all on her own, but my heavenly mother, the one I cry out to and pray to is black and beautiful and infinitely powerful as she gives life to all we know. Now I haven't always known of the heavenly mother's healing, wombish, cradling darkness. It came to me in a prophetic dream once at a time when I was mourning the death of my daughter Sophia and anxiously awaiting the birth of my first son in which a diverse group of women all wearing white appeared to me that dream began my education and led me to the goddess project in which I was introduced to the African goddess Yamaya, AKA Mama Wata, who is still worshiped in parts of West Africa by the Yoruba people in Brazil and in the Caribbean. She shares the Latin name Stella Maris with mother Mary as Stella Maris means star of the sea. It is told that Yamaya swam alongside her children as they were wrongfully stolen away on the transatlantic slave trade market. Later in Haiti and New Orleans, her children would eventually conceal her in their paintings, calling her Erzuli Frida sometimes clad in white skin and a Virgin Mary look, they glorified her just under the noses of ignorant European missionaries. Yamaya's yellow clad, sexy freshwater sister Ocean, who loves honey, was honored by the queen bee herself, Beyonce, who gave homage to the goddess in her award-winning music video, Lemonade. My dear, black, my dear friend who modeled and brought Yamaya to the Goddess Project and into my life, shared stories of her own powerful pilgrimages to see the Black Madonna while she visited her sister in Belgium. There are hundreds of these sacred statuettes of the Black Madonna all over Europe and throughout the world that hundreds of thousands of worshipers have been traveling to see every year for over a thousand years. Many pilgrims walk weeks, often risking their lives, sometimes on their knees, just to be near her. These often very small statues of the Black Madonna are made of dark wood or darkened. Some are actually carved out of black precious stones. They all are believed to work miracles. I was lucky enough to see one of these Black Madonnas at the Notre Dame in Paris. Notre Dame translates as Our Lady, just months before Notre Dame caught fire last year. Most of these Black Madonna churches are found in Germany and France and are only a quick sail across the Black Sea to Egypt and the rest of North Africa. In Africa, I mean in Egypt, which is in Africa, still reigning for thousands of years since before Christ is the winged high black queen of heaven, Isis, the savior. 
She has often been depicted seated on a throne. Isis means throne, holding her royal child in her lap. Similar images of the virgin and child would be replicated in Christian art, mirroring Isis and her son. Isis is mentioned in texts found outside of Bethlehem in containers with lost books of the Bible in a powerful poem called Thunder Perfect Mind. Elaine Pagels, the um, professor of religion that helped translate some of these lost texts, sent me this lengthy poem upon my inquiry of the Black Madonna. Here's an excerpt. Do not be ignorant of me, for I am the first and the last. I am the honored one and the scorned one. I am the whore and the holy one. I am the wife and the virgin. I am the mother and the daughter. I am the members of my mother. I am the barren one and many are her sons. I am the one whose image is great in Egypt. I am the one who has no image among the barbarians. I am the one who has been hated everywhere and who has been loved everywhere. I was delighted recently at the empowering film, The Black Panther, when the sheroes and heroes would pray they would pray to Bast, who is the adored black cat goddess, also of Egypt. And the Greek Gnostic goddess, Sigi. Ancient Greeks taught she was the black, beautifully velvety, silent void of the universe from whom all life springs. Sigi who is silence herself, gave birth to her daughter, Sophia. Holy wisdom. Sophia is mentioned 500 times in the Bible. She appears in the Hebrew Bible 222 times. Happy are those who find Sophia and those who get understanding, for her income is better than any silver and her revenue better than gold. She is more precious than jewels and nothing you desire can compare with her. Proverbs 3, 13 through 16. Sophia even appears in Plato's Protagoras and Greek goddess Athena was also called Sophia. Eighty percent of the entire universe is black, velvety darkness, like a comforting mother. Eighty percent of the earth is warm, dark, rich, hidden soil in which everything grows. All of the food for all of the living creatures on earth. And the sacred soil functions just like a mother's breast milk does, having the perfect amount of nutrients for her babies to thrive. And so is every woman's womb, secret, silent, sacred, a perfect place of pleasure and for growing offspring. There has been a disconnect in this modern world the sacredness of the womb has been abused, raped, mutilated, and disrespected by pure imbalance. And the same has happened to Mother Earth. Concrete poured all over her, <clears throat> oil sucked out and spilled on holy land. The dark, the dark women <clears throat> made in her image left with the most unlivable situations, thrive still, and are strong because she is coursing through their veins and she rises. 
like the black Hindu goddess Kali, whose name literally means black in Sanskrit, shows up wild, crazy, angry, and fearless when called into battle. And Kali finishes the job. Burning down and destroying everything in sight, a new world can start to grow again from the rubble remains. So, on May 25th of this year, when under the knee of imbalanced oppression, George Floyd, in his choked last breath, called out to his mama, I can't help but believe he summoned all the mamas, especially our creatress that answered that call saying, enough is enough. Black is holy and she is rising. Mm -hmm. 